Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today, I'll show you a guide to the basics of the ARC. This has been a heavily requested video. On top of the basics, I will also be showing you the XP rates of the Uncharted Isles as well as how to farm chimes really fast. Now as a quick disclaimer, this isn't a complete guide. What I won't be showing you are how to complete the ARC journal or even the salty title. Yeah, so I'm probably going to do this in another video. As for requirements, technically it only requires impressing the locals mini quest in order to access this. Here are the recommendations of the Uncharted Isles. Now you want to complete the Flagfall mini quest. You don't need each and every single high level skill but it just really really does help as you're going to access every resource in the Uncharted Isles. Now generally speaking, it is pretty high level skilling content. I mean the arc itself doesn't offer you many useful rewards at the lower levels. Here is the entire table of contents for the basic section. Feel free to skip this section because I'll be moving on. So Tony, how do you get to the Ark? You want to go to the Port Serum Lodestone. Then you're going to keep going north to the very north docks. You want to sail the Quartermaster to Waiko. Yeah, there are multiple islands in the Ark, but trust me, Waiko is the main island you want to focus on. So when you enter, you're going to keep going south until you reach the marketplace. You want to talk to Sharkbone and then he'll give you an arc journal. Now, this arc journal can give you unlimited teleports to Port Serum and it lands you right beside the Quartermaster. See, it makes things really really convenient. There are a total of 11 mini quests in the arc. I've listed you the complete requirements for all the quests. I'm not going to show you a guide on how to do each and every single one of them because I don't have footage on this. There is an RS Wiki link for all the quests and I will leave the link in the description. The next section I'll get into are the upgrades and the unlocks in the arc. So first of all, you want to talk to Bonnie and Waiko. Well, the first tab is for the basic unlocks, the upgrades, and even the Bone Crusher upgrade. Now some of these upgrades in this tab are for the completionist cape requirement. The second tab we have is the equipment tab. Most of the stuff here is just overpriced. Tab number 3, customizations. This is also another cosmetic tab and you basically add this to the Uncharted Isles. They are pretty much props that will make your Uncharted Isles look a little bit cooler. Finally for tab number 4, those are consumables. Now you can buy teleport tablets which, like I said before, they will teleport you to various islands within the Ark. Then we also have the XP lamps as well. There's also a ports reward shop from Bonnie. You can buy 3 different things. Some scrolls are exclusively unlocked through the Ark, and then we have the resources as well as the trade goods. Let's talk about chimes. They are the main currency in the arc. There are many ways you can earn them. You can buy all sorts of unlocks from Bonnie or you can even buy supplies from Rosie. When you're selling resources in the arc, there is a chimes daily cap. To start off, you can only earn 20,000 chimes and then with maximum upgrades this can be bumped all the way to 30,000. As for completion escape requirement, this requires you a whopping 24,750 chimes and 21 Taiji 2. I listed the exact upgrades on screen so just pause the video as I will be moving on to the next section. The secondary currency we have is the Taiji 2. Just like chimes, it is used for upgrades and various rewards from Bonnie. There are several different ways you can obtain this but there just isn't any true best way to obtain this. It's up to you to decide what is the best way to obtain this. For me, I would probably explore Uncharted Isles over time and you'll pretty much end up with a boatload of these Taiji 2. The next section I'll get into are the resources in the Ark. Now there are various resources you can gather in the Ark, but I won't be covering in too much detail on this. You want to know why? Because the Ark resources give you terrible XP and the chime rates aren't even that good. Seriously, if all you care about are chimes and XP rates, just don't waste your time on this, okay? Now you might be thinking, Tony, aren't the level requirements much lower? Actually, the level requirements aren't that far lower compared to their Uncharted Isle counterparts. There's really only one benefit of this, and that is they do not have any sort of limit on resources. If you're wondering where are the locations for all the resources, then I will leave the RS Wiki link in the description. Let's talk about supplies. These are used for Uncharted Isles. Now you can buy supplies from Rosie and Waiko Marketplace. They will cost you 25 chimes each. As you buy upgrades in the Ark, this can be reduced all the way down to 10 chimes. 
To start things off, you can only hold 50 supplies at once. Luckily for you, you can upgrade this even further and you can store up to a thousand supplies at once. You see that supply crate a little bit north, right? Well, you can get 5 free daily supplies. On top of that, if you're not on during that day, then 5 more supplies will be added for the next day. The free supply crate can only hold up to 50 supplies at once. The next section I'll get into are the Uncharted Isles. First of all, you want to use your Arc Journal and then teleport to Port Serum. You will now sail from the Quartermaster. Instead of selecting the named islands, you want to select Uncharted Isles. As you can see on the menu, there are three different Uncharted Isle sizes. I'm going to explain later what this means. As I stated earlier, you do need supplies in order to sail to Uncharted Isles. There are a lot of things in the Uncharted Isles. The most coveted and the most sought after feature for Uncharted Isles are the special resources. As shown on the minimap icon, you get to see which resources are available. There are also random items on the floor you can pick up. Then we also have Taijitu chests, as well as free washed up supplies. Now as for the rare special resources, unfortunately, they have a resource limit before it's fully depleted. With that being said, the XP rates are very very high, and most of the resources you gather are extremely AFK. Not only that, but it's also very valuable for chimes. Like I said, I highly suggest you gather these resources instead of camping the regular islands. Trust me, it's much more efficient that way. Now, higher island sizes will cost you more supplies, but it will give you more skilling resource colonies. Then we also have ways you can get to the Uncharted Isles without even spending supplies or chimes. The first way is the Uncharted Isles map. You know how when you're randomly skilling, you're like, what the heck is this item? When you talk to the Quartermaster, he will send you to an island that has 3 to 5 special resources. Then we also have the green map, and that is from the Traveling Merchant. This time, instead of 3 to 5 resources, it is bumped to 4 to 6 resources. Flagging an Island In order to flag an island, you have to complete the Flagfall mini quests. When you open up the Consumables tab from Bonnie, you can actually claim a free flag. Here is how flagging works. When you find an Uncharted Isle that you really like, you can place a flag on this. Now unfortunately, you can only flag one island at a time. It will also replace the previously flagged island. What's really amazing about island flagging is that the skilling resources replenish every single day at 00 UTC time. On top of that, it only costs you 3 supplies in order to revisit this island. With that being said, it is best to find an island to flag that has multiple of the same skilling resources you really want. If you were to flag an island and then gather from it as a daily activity, it is actually the most efficient way to train in the arc. But Tony, not everyone likes daily scape. I get it, but trust me, it is extremely fast over time, okay? Here is the table of contents for the strategy and the setups. On the bottom right corner of the screen, I've also written a short disclaimer on both the chime and XP rates. Feel free to pause this video because I will be moving on to the next section. The first resource I'll get into are the Golden Bamboo. Here is the equipment and inventory setup. You want to bring a Crystal Hatchet with Honed and Furnace Perk. I mean, for the Furnace Perk, you'll get more XP but fewer chimes and resources. By bringing Grace of the Elves with Sign of the Porter's Charge on it, this actually makes it a lot more AFK. You also want to drink a Perfect Juju Woodcutting Potion because there's a chance you can cut an extra log. I'm using a Perfect Plus Potion in this case. Moving on, we have the strategy. So it's really simple, just chop the golden bamboo and pretty much keep AFKing. Now every colony will last you 100 golden bamboo before it's fully depleted. The things that will let you chop extra golden bamboo will not actually increase the capacity of this. Basically, it will make it deplete faster. Here are the XP rates. So in 53 minutes, I was able to chop 200 golden bamboo in total. The XP per hour you can get for this is 192k woodcutting XP per hour using the urns and the lumberjack outfit. Now you also need to process this in order to maximize your chime value. It requires 96 fletching. When you're bundling, you have to bundle 2 pieces of golden bamboo into one bundle of bamboo. The amount of chimes per hour you can get for this is 1.2k. Finally, you want to sell the bundle of bamboo to the market in this island called Twilight. Just use the teleport tablet from the Bonnie's reward shop and you'll pretty much arrive right beside that. 
you get better value than selling it to the bamboo merchant in Waiko. Moving on, we have the Wabagongs. Once again, the furnace perk is just if you want more XP, but fewer resources. Now for the perfect juju fishing and the perfect plus potion, they're gonna give you extra catches. You can pretty much keep AFKing just like the woodcutting setup. Once again, just like that, it only lasts you 100 Wabagong before it fully depletes. There are things that give you extra Wabagong, but obviously they will not increase the capacity of how much you get in a single colony. I was only able to do 21 minutes of fishing, but I depleted 100 Wabagongs. I wasn't able to do more than one colony because these skilling resources are extremely rare compared to others. Using urns as well as the regular fishing outfit, you can get an XP per hour of 253k. You have to cook 2 wabagongs into 1 wabagong oil. Now this requires 96 cooking. Ideally, you want to use a portable range for the chance of an extra wabagong oil. It will also stack with the modified sous chef hat. The amount of chimes per hour you can get from this is 1.7k. Now this does not factor in the chance of getting an extra wabagong oil. So the location I'm going to sell this at is at the fish merchant in the Waiko marketplace. The next resource we have are the golden crablets. There's this new pickaxe called the earthen song pickaxe. If you don't have this pickaxe that's fine because you can still use an elder room pickaxe plus 5. The only problem is that it is not augmentable. Now for the crystal skill champas, they're actually really cheap to use for mining. For every crablet, there is a 5 minute timer before it fully depletes. Now you can gather as many salt as you want. You know how when you're normally mining, there's a stamina bar and it keeps draining over time, right? Well, the stamina bar will never drain over time when you're mining these crablets. See, it just makes things even more AFK. In 50 minutes of mining two colonies worth of golden crablets, I got 402 salt and 220k mining XP. You can get around 264k mining XP per hour and 480 golden salt per hour. What's also amazing about salt is that you do not need to process them. That means you could get a staggering 2,400 chimes per hour. So you can sell this at the salt merchant in the Waiko marketplace. Ancestral Energies. Although they do require 95 divination, but you can actually boost it from as low as 81. For the energy gathering scrimshaw, it will actually double the output. Now, it will last you 5.5 minutes every single spring. Unfortunately, there is a limit of 300 energies before it fully depletes. However, what's really amazing about the energy gathering scrimshaw is that it actually doubles the amount, but it won't make it deplete faster. In 26 minutes, I was able to harvest 607 energies. If you were to make this into a full hour, that would be equivalent to 160k divination XP per hour. Now, I did AFK longer than usual, so that is why the XP per hour is a little bit lower than I expected. For energies, you do not need to process them. You can get a whopping 2,900 chimes per hour if you were to use the energy gathering scrimshaw. Without the energy gathering scrimshaw, you can still get around 1.4k to 1.5k chimes per hour. Where do you sell your divine energies? Well, there's this divine merchant located in the island that was once turtles. You want to sail from the quartermaster and then select that island. Once you've arrived, you want to tune that portal that's a little bit north. I'm going to explain later how you can charge a portal. The base amount of chimes you can sell it for are 2 chimes each. Moving on, we have the Ornate Turtles. You do need 96 Hunter, but you can actually boost it from as low as 81 with an Extreme Hunter Potion. For my equipment setup, you want to bring a Combined Callus Fragment. What's really amazing is that it will reset the fail traps for you. You also want to bring 6 Turtle Traps. Now you want to have the Perfect Plus Potion active. You then also want to bring any perfect juju potion in your inventory. This is for the one tick method for Hunter. Every colony will last you 200 catches before it fully depletes. Unfortunately, this is the only non-AFK arc method. Now you might be asking me, what exactly is the one tick method for Hunter? I did previously explain this in my 1 to 99 Hunter guide if you guys want to check this out. What you're going to do is attempt to drink the potion and then set the total trap immediately. Preferably, you want to keep buying them both because it makes it a lot easier. Now, there are several different one tick methods, but I find that the perfect plus potion method is the most efficient one. When you're resetting the traps, instead of standing underneath to check them, you want to stand right beside them. Now, you want to wait until your character kneels down 
and then deploy a new trap. What's also amazing about hunting turtles is that there's a chance you can get a Taiji too. In 47 total minutes worth of islands, I was able to get 618 shell chippings. That means I would have gotten a whopping 1.6 million hunter XP per hour. No, this is not a typo or a clickbait, okay? Now in terms of processing, you do need 92 crafting. Basically, you have to craft 4 shell chippings into one shiny total bowl. The amount of chimes per hour you can get from this is around 2.3k. So there is a total merchant in Waiko Marketplace. Every bowl will sell for 12 chimes each. Finally, the last skilling resource we have are the mushroom clusters. If you do have tier 2 Zygamite perk, it also helps as well. This is from player owned farms. You can click the mushroom cluster and then keep AFKing. Now, it will last you 30 minutes before it fully depletes the entire patch. Once in a while, you will actually get hit by a thorn, so you have to click again. By harvesting this patch, you will get all sorts of various mushrooms. I depleted two mushroom cluster patches in 65 minutes. The XP per hour for farming you can get for this is 62k. So the amount of mushrooms I got were 113 sliced mushrooms worth of mushrooms. You have to slice these mushrooms and so this requires 86 cooking. When you slice the mushrooms, you just want to click on it and then pretty much AFK to slice them. Some mushrooms require two of them to slice into a sliced mushroom while others, they only require a 1 to 1 ratio. The amount of chimes per hour you can get for this is 1.2k. Now, if you want optimal chimes, then you want to sell this to the food merchant in the Cyclosis Island. You will use the Cyclosis Teleport from Bonnie, and then you'll arrive nearby. Let's talk about the other chime methods. I'll start with Shark Soups. It requires 96 cooking. Now, it also requires 99 cooking in order to stop burning them. If you're an Iron Man, then you want to unlock the Waiko Grill. For each shark soup, there are 5 items that are required. You know how I said wabagongs are pretty rare, right? Well, this is where ancestral energies come into play. You need 20 energy and 20 gold salt in order to transmute to 10 wabagong oil. If you were to wear the modified divination head, then it will actually save you energies. If you compare the gold salt, it's just so much easier to get, okay? Now obviously, before you cook the soup, you have to add all the ingredients first. Yeah, so adding them is fairly quick. Now when you're cooking it, you want to cook it on the portable range. Make sure you wear cooking gauntlets and the modified sous chef hat. Because you don't have access to a portable range if you're an Iron Man, then you can actually use the Waiko grill near the food merchant. It basically acts as a portable range in which case, you do get a chance of an extra shark soup. If you were to ask me this question, how many chimes can you get per hour from doing this? Well, I can't really answer you this question because there are a lot of various variables. I mean, you gotta factor in the time that you spend gathering all these resources, and then processing them, and finally adding them to the soup, and then of course cooking them. The base amount of chimes you can get for every single soup is 85. In this case, it's a 34 chimes profit. I highly suggest you have the commodity increase sale because it will make things even more valuable. So with that being said, it is the best chimes per hour in the game. The next chime method I'll talk about are the Pekins. They're located in the south part of Waiko Marketplace. It's just right between the bamboo and the food merchant. Now there are technically no requirements for this. However, I do recommend you have 91 cooking, as well as having unlocked the Waiko Grill. Having 70 invention also helps as well. For my inventory and equipment setup, this is what you want to bring. Any sort of high tier main hand weapon, and then follow that up with modified sous chef hat. You should also bring a bone crusher, but in this case, I put this in my tool belt. The cannon you'll be bringing is a magic cannon, and this is called the Old Act Coil. Now if you're not using an Old Act Coil, then you can still bring aggression potions. So if you're using a cannon, you want to place them exactly where I'm standing, and pretty much let the cannon kill the Pekins. As you're killing the Pekins, you want to area loot the eggs and the raw Pekins. Now, if you do have the cooking level requirement, then you want to cook the Pekins on the range nearby while your cannon is just killing more and more Pekins. When you've cooked the Pekins, you want to sell both the eggs and the cooked Pekins to the food merchant. The cannon should pretty much one hit KO the Pekins. If they end up chasing you, then you just want to lure them immediately to the cannons. I like to loot the eggs as soon as they spawn. So in a single hour, you should be able to get almost 2.6k chimes. 
The amount of cannonballs you consume is only 671. I think if you were to use aggression potions without any sort of requirement, then it's probably like 1.5k chimes per hour. The last main method for chimes is token farming. It is located in the Temple of Eminishi. Now there's an Elite Dungeons FC and a Discord, in which case they will help you find teams. You don't really need super high combat stats. I mean, personally, I was able to do this as an Ironman with a group of 3 tier 70s. The amount of chimes per hour you can get from this is around 1.5k to 2k chimes. It does look confusing, but luckily for you, I do have a full guide on this and I will definitely leave that link in the description. We also have the ARC contracts. You want to talk to the contracts guy and then he'll give you a new one. The daily contracts will give you a lot of XP in a certain task and chimes in addition to this. You can also re-roll the contracts if you don't like them, and it will cost you chimes. The best contracts I like to complete are both divination or the woodcutting. Now I did have a guide on this in the past, so I'm just going to leave that link in the description. Moving on, we have the Tordal Portals. This is another completionist cape requirement. There are three Tordal Portals. In order to get to the first portal, you have to teleport to Port Serum. Now you're going to travel through the Quartermaster and select the island that was once Turtles. Just right near the docks and the mushroom patch, you will see a portal nearby. It will take you 50 ancestral energy in order to activate this. Portal number 2. After you teleport it, just go directly west of the island. It will take you another 50 ancestral energies. Yeah, so when it comes to charging this, it does take a while to charge. For portal number 3, it is just straight northwest after teleporting. Yes, it will require another 50 Ancestral Energies. Finally, the very last section, what are the best items to buy with chimes? If you're going for 120 all skills or even 200 mil, you're probably going to have a lot of spare resources. For the best value, that would be huge XP lamps. If you want to do this for money, you can otherwise do Ancient Bones. Unfortunately, it will also cost you Taijitsu, so it may not be worth going for if you want the money. This wraps up my extremely long guide to the Ark. With that being said, I wish you all the best with your goals in the Ark. Once again, I might be making a guide in the future on the Salty title or how to complete the Ark journal. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I will be doing some major guides in the future.